Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant. And, well, here's the thing. This whole throttle gate issue over the past week. I'll share a benchmark with you comparing uh, a mid-spec 2018 MacBook Pro 15-inch I just bought versus my daily driver, the uh, 2017 4.2 GHz 5K Retina 27-inch iMac in a bit. But... The overarching point I want to make is that what Dave Lee, along with other YouTubers like Jonathan Morrison, my friend Max Yuriev, and then on the other hand, Apple, have demonstrated this week goes way beyond the thermal throttling problem of the MacBook Pro. I want to reflect upon this with you because, well, first, together, they've demonstrated the power of the web and YouTube in particular, to amplify what former librarian of Congress, historian and author Daniel J. Boorstin, referred to as the amateur spirit. I mean, yeah, sure. The web gives us much more access to crackpots, hate, and noise, but also wisdom, love, understanding art and truth, and gives us the opportunity to take a step back to explore our own responsibility for our own choices around, say, workflow in the case of 4K editing on machines like these, which can be even bigger throttles on our work, or how we respond to adversity and dashed expectations by, say, just whining into the ether like screaming into a pillow and choking on our own bile, or figuring out how to make things better. In Burston's essay, entitled, well, entitled The Amateur Spirit, he wrote, listen to this. I have observed that the world has suffered far less from ignorance than from pretensions to knowledge. It is not skeptics or explorers, but fanatics and ideologues who menace decency and progress. No agnostic ever burned anyone at the stake or tortured a pagan, a heretic, or an unbeliever. Which is maybe a bit heavy for a short segment nominally about an underperforming computer chip, but I already told you, this is about much more than that. Late in the same essay, Borsten wrote this. My own experience has made me wary of the institutions, the ways, the attitudes of all professionals. With the good fortune to be permitted to be a historian without conventional credentials, I, Burston, have delighted in pursuing history for the love of it. This amateur spirit has guided my thinking and writing. Of course, we need devices to economize our intellectual sallies, and the professions can somehow serve in this way. But the rewards and refreshments of thought and the arts come from the courage to try something, all sorts of things, for the first time. These First-time adventurers are the spice of life. An enamored amateur need not be a genius to stay out of ruts he has never been trained in. Which, of course, is really the point of the story of Srinivasa Ramanujan, the Indian mathematician played by Dev Patel in the movie The Man Who Knew Infinity. Although, I have to differ slightly with Mr. Borston, insofar as in my own experience, I know and count as friends a number of extraordinary professionals who retain the amateur spirit and, being genuinely nice people, to me are the most impressive of all. In other words, a few guys, by virtue of their curiosity, passion, intellect, discipline, ability to communicate and, okay, maybe the YouTube business model, managed to get the single most valuable company on the planet to respond, essentially, instantly, to fix a problem. Which, on the one hand, you could dismiss as nothing more than Apple using paying customers as beta testers. I understand. But, on the other, speaks volume about Apple in a positive way, because you and I both know plenty of companies who would do the exact opposite. Ignore disparage, deflect, or double down. As, let's also admit, Apple has sometimes done in the past. Second, 
it puts the repeal of net neutrality into sharper relief because that repeal lays the groundwork for a different kind of throttling, dramatically more important than a chip running below its marketed specification, the throttling, literally, of the free flow of information. I mean, sit with that for a moment. Finally, it demonstrates our own ability to throttle ourselves by the choices we make or don't, which is the most important point of all, because if, if, we get the products we deserve, a spin on the classic, we get the politicians we deserve, but that is another topic for another time and place, then we need to take a closer look at ourselves and our own culpability. Is clock speed the thing we should be focused on? Should we get all bent out of shape if this year's laptop is, in the end, only a few seconds, a few minutes, or a few percentage points faster than last year's model? Well, yes, actually, we should, if it is being sold as dramatically faster, and we need that speed truly. On the other hand, do we need it? Do we need to be upgrading every year? And going a little farther afield over ground I've covered briefly before, yet part of the same ecosystem, how excited should we really be that, say, the newest iPhone will let you represent yourself to friends and family as a talking pile of poo. I mean, really? I'll get small, technical, and personal to make the basic point. At the end of 2016, I bought a 24 terabyte uh, GTEC G-Speed Shuttle XL RAID system and a pretty maxed out 4.2 gigahertz, 27 inch Retina 5K iMac with top GPU, the 580. More than four years after my last purchase, a mid-2012 MacBook Pro 15-inch non-retina. Now, that laptop had handled all of my writing and editing chores with a plum until I started capturing and distributing in 4K. That laptop burned my lap. That laptop, during a project in the Sonoran Desert, burned my brain. As night after night, for the better part of a week, with its CPU, GPU, and I.O. all maxed out, and gating both the laptop's throughput and my productivity, required me to edit into the wee hours of the morning for what ended up being a two minute and 20 second video. Now that is insanity, but did I need to shoot and deliver in 4K? Could I really not handle editing proxy files, which I refused to do then and still refuse to do now? Did I really need the iMac? Did I need the storage? And then last week, did I really need to add a mid-spec 2018 15-inch MacBook Pro, the 2.6 gigahertz i7 6-core with Radeon 560X, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and half terabyte drive? Would my intended audience appreciate the difference? Were these even really the right questions? Well, yeah. They are, for purposes of intellectual rigor, but no, in pursuit of the truth of what makes me happy, what motivates me, and what, as a flawed but human being, rather than a machine, allows me to create. Because while I certainly could have throttled my ambitions and standards with little to no commercial impact, all else being equal, I would have been so miserable reaching my own intellectual, emotional, and creative limits that I simply wouldn't have had the ambition to do what I've subsequently done over the past year. Grow this YouTube channel with your help, dear YouTube viewers, and produce a 22-episode documentary web series as, I like to think with a nod to Robert Kappa, a concerned filmmaker. Which, in the end, are the metrics about which I care more. And I acknowledge, demonstrate, how far I still have to go to attain wisdom and discipline. Although it's pretty nice to report that even before yesterday's patch, my new MacBook Pro 15 was already crushing my old mid-2012 for those times when, and here's the other part of my workflow, I don't like writing or editing at my desk. Like this. And this. And though slower than my 2017 iMac, which does indeed seem to be much better behaved when it comes to thermal performance and throttling, but not without its questions, 
seems in the real world to be about 50% slower than the iMac. And that, given that the iMac has been a screamer for me, is more than fine. Of course, your mileage may vary. So, thank you, Dave, Jonathan, Max, and countless others for identifying the thermal throttling issue. Apple, thank you for jumping all over this and getting so quickly to a fix. Finally, thank you all, including YouTube and the people who created the web in the first place, guys like Bob Kahn and Tim Berners-Lee, for giving us the mechanism and impetus to think about other kinds of throttling that are actually far more important than the thermal throttling of a computer chip. I'm done. If you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, join the conversation in the comment section below. You guys are just so sharp and so generous. Just wow. Share. Create a playlist. Consider supporting our work by using our no cost to you affiliate links down below or making a contribution directly via the PayPal link down below. As always, we thank you for it. For three blind men and an elephant, I'll be rousting. See you next time. <laughs>